Hello everyone, my name is Jennifer and today I'm going to be talking about my disease of the day, pertussis. My patient is a six month old female with no prior vaccination history. Before A week before coming into the clinic, she experienced symptoms of a cold like runny nose, sneezing, mild cough, low grade fever. However, in the past two days, her symptoms have gotten progressively worse with coughing spells that last longer than a minute, causing her to turn red and gasp for air and making a weird sound as she does so. Um, for me to evaluate the possible diseases, I focused in on the fever aspect just because it indicates an infection and also the coughing in order to narrow down the possible diseases. Um, viral rhinitis, acute bronchitis, and pneumonia were all diseases I focused in on initially because they all had to do with respiratory tract infection um, or they displayed similar symptoms as the patient. The diagnosis was actually pertussis, which is whooping cough. Um, and the reason the others weren't was because the patient's uh, symptoms were actually getting progressively worse, unlike the other diseases where the symptoms actually get better within a week. How, uh, for the early symptoms of whooping cough, we have a runny nose, a low-grade fever, mild cough, apnea, and in the later stages, after like about a week or two, we have rapid coughs followed by high-pitched whoop sound, exhaustion, and vomiting due to a lot of coughing. Initial testing can actually be, be, be quite difficult because symptoms appear as a common cold. General testing like x-rays, blood work, and physical examination to make sure that there's no um, any irregularities with breathing are conducted. However, those are nonspecific. So in order to test for the specific bacteria, bacteria infecting the patient, uh, culturing bacteria is actually required. So taking a, a sample from the nasopharynx um, allows for the specificity. And this can be done through nasoaspirate test or a swab test. Uh, the microorganism that causes pertussis um, comes from the Bordetella genus. These bacteria are characterized as being small and gram negative. They're also aerobic um, and they are encapsul encapsulated coxobacilli. Um, they're able to uh, produce virulence factors like basically that are um, poison and their members are notorious for causing respiratory infections. Uh, B pertussis is able to produce virulence factors called pertussins toxins, and these toxins are actually the reason why the symptoms are so present in whooping cough because they um, damage the cilia in the respiratory tract and make their way through the body. Um, this type of bacteria is the most common bacteria to cause whooping cough. However, B. paraprotussis is also another bacteria that can cause um, whooping cough symptoms. Um, however, the diagnosis is less common and the form is less extreme. The main difference is that B. paraprotussis cannot produce PT or paraprotussin um, toxins. Uh, again, these bacteria attached to the cilia that line part of the upper respiratory tract and make their way through the body. This diagram does a really good job at explaining the process, so you can feel free to pause and look at it. Um, in terms of transmission, this bacteria is highly contagious and it travels through respiratory droplets. So if you come into contact with someone who has bacteria and you happen to be near this individual and they sneeze or cough, you're most likely to um, get it if you don't take preventative measures. The treatment can involve antibiotics and using antibiotic, antibiotics can help reduce infection, prevent spread. However, symptoms can persist even after bacteria are gone. So the use of antibiotics in the later stages of the disease is ineffective. So home treatment like a mist vaporizer, which allows for a better airflow of oxygen into the lungs is advised. And in extreme cases, hospitalization involves suctioning of mucus, giving the patient oxygen and IV fluids to avoid dehydration, and obviously maintaining good hygiene and wearing a face mask to avoid uh, transmission. 
preventative measures overall involve getting vaccinated. There are two types of vaccines out there. However, the one that is uh, more modern and currently given is the DTAP. Um, children should receive at least uh, five, not, not at least, five doses uh, between the ages of two, four, six months, toddler and six. And they should all practice good hygiene, make sure you wash your hands, wearing face masks when the individual is sick. So thank you for watching and these are my references.